I'm Nan McKay, and today we are thrilled to welcome the remarkable Dr. Sabrina Dean to our podcast. A true pillar in the healthcare industry, Dr. Sabrina is from Dayton, Ohio, and boasts an impressive portfolio as the CEO of Dr. Sabrina's Healthcare Consulting and the founder of Sabrina's Consulting. She's also co-founded the African-American Women Giving Circle in Dayton. With a background enriched by significant roles in various healthcare organizations and a tenure as an adjunct professor at Franklin University, she has consistently showcased her commitment to elevating the healthcare sector. Over the past 15 years, She's cemented her status as a healthcare powerhouse, guiding organizations to achieve stellar ratings and financial stability, and nurturing the future leaders of the industry. As we delve into this conversation, we seek to explore the depth of knowledge and the fountain of experience that Dr. Sabrina embodies. So let's dive in. Dive in. Welcome, Sabrina. Thank you. Sabrina, could you tell us about the initial spark that ignited your passion for healthcare and really how your journey began? Absolutely. My initial spark in healthcare started when I was a child. My mom died when I was three years old at the age of 24 from a brain tumor, she had cancer. And as a result of that, my father raised me and my brother as a widowed parent. So at a young age, I started helping my father around the house with household chores. And that led over into helping others in school because that was a gift of mine that I could help other children with their schoolwork. So that's something I started doing. And then as I got a little bit older, I became a candy striper where I helped the volunteers at a local hospital. So in that role, I went around with the volunteers and we had these little carts that we would push into the patient rooms and we would have flowers and magazines and little treats that the patients could purchase. And the name came about because we wore white lab coats and then the sleeves had red stripes. So hence that's where the name Candy Striper came from. After that, there was another local hospital that offered a program when I was in junior high school to help students become more interested in healthcare. So I enrolled in that program and in that program, I was able to learn about the different roles of the healthcare team. So that fine tuned my interest in healthcare a little bit more. And that's what sparked my interest and started my journey in healthcare. You know, when I was about, I don't know, maybe 14 or 15, I really wanted to be a candy striper too. So I never did it, but I wanted to. So I know exactly, probably, uh, well, let's say I, I feel like I know what may have intrigued you with it because I felt the same way. Yes, and it all stemmed from helping my dad, helping the other children at school. You see the, the trend there, help. So I'm a helper, a giver. Your healthcare uh, consulting program promises to elevate organizations to the 90th percentile with CMS value-based purchasing quality measures. Could you elaborate on kind of how this program works and what sets it apart? Yes, absolutely. How this program works is a system that I have designed over several years I first started in healthcare quality in 2002. 
So I have over 20 years experience just in healthcare quality. And when I started in that, my initial role, it was at a 700 bed short-term acute care hospital in the Dayton, Ohio area. And I had to learn very fast on how to solve issues and problems. There was three of us for the entire hospital, three coordinators. So I developed a system that I've utilized since then called the MARP method. And the M stands for master plan. The A is accomplishing. The R is research. And the P is for perform. So by utilizing these steps, an organization can get to the 90th percentile, which is where hospitals want to be so that they do not leave any money on the table with CMS and get out of the red and into the black by implementing this system. Because my system has been developed to cement solutions and not a Band-Aid approach. Also, my program, which sets me apart, is one, I've worked in quality for over 20 years. Two, I've tried this program at several different organizations over the years. And it has proven to cement solutions and not Band-Aid. Additionally, the program is not cookie cutter per se. It is tailored for the actual hospital. Also, the MARP method can be utilized outside of hospitals and it can be utilized in any organization because it solves problems and gets to the solutions. Does it set up like performance standards? Yes, there are performance standards. Additionally, it can be utilized to improve personal quality. So if you have an issue in your life that you've been trying to solve, let's say, for example, lose weight, you can utilize the MARP method for that to improve, you know, losing weight in your life. So I assume there's a tracking component to it. Yes, there is a tracking component to it uh, where you look at the plan that you develop over 30 and 60 days and refine as you go. Or if things are progressing, then it's hardwired. But I still say come back after 60 to 90 days and just ensure that it is definitely hardwired. So it's it has that final analysis and taking another look at the end and saying, is this working the way we wanted it to do? That is correct. And that is in the P portion, the performing step okay. of the MARP method. As someone with a really rich background in various critical roles in healthcare organizations, how have your past experiences shaped the services and insights that you offer through Dr. Sabrina's healthcare consulting? My past experiences has helped shape my current ser services through Dr. Sabrina's healthcare consulting by, again, I've been in healthcare for 35 years now. I actually started as a state tested nursing assistant and I've been a registered nurse for 28 years. So I've worked in several different hospitals. I've worked in short-term acute care hospitals and also long-term acute care hospitals. So my vast experience has helped me to develop my healthcare consulting business to get to the root or the core of a lot of issues. And again, utilizing the system with the MARP method um, creating effective solutions and where organizations can move forward. Well, it helps when you've been on the inside. So you've seen it from a different perspective than just a consultant coming in and saying, okay, let me think, I'm going to 
do healthcare organizations. You know, you've actually been there and done that. And that's so important. Yes, that is very important to actually be, you know, boots on the ground, yeah. working, solving the problems, creating effective solutions day in and day out, year after year. So that is my, you know, niche um, for helping other organizations to develop effective solutions. Because we all know in organizations, there's there's going to be some issues. So we don't want to just band-aid it because we know what happens to a band-aid when it gets wet, right? It comes off. So we want cement because we know that cement is going to stay unless you get your, you know, your chisel out and actually chisel it away. But other than that, the the rain, the snow, the hail is not going to impede that cement. That's why solutions should be cemented and not band-aided. Well, you've really been a pivotal part of both short-term and long-term acute care hospitals. Uh, can you shed some light on some of the unique challenges and opportunities that these settings present? Some of the unique uh, challenges that these settings set is keeping the patient safe and free of infections because those two big things are things that CMS look at in hospitals in their value-based purchasing program. So with keeping patients safe, that involves, you know, free from falls. Um, as I stated, free from infections because sometime a patient may need to have a central line inserted, you know, in their major artery and to receive medications through that. Well, it's important to keep that clean so that the patient does not develop an infection. So basically when a patient goes in the hospital infection free, they should leave the hospital infection free. And so my program helps to get to, again, cement solutions for patients that do develop infections or may have a fall, because those are two big things that would keep hospitals in the red and not in the black and leave some money on the table with CMS. So it's, it's just a win-win for CMS, it's a win-win for the patient, for the organization, and for the healthcare providers, the physicians, and then the staff that are providing the care for the patient. Beyond your role as consultant, you also wear the hat of an educator as adjunct professor at Franklin University. Could you share with us how you approach the task of molding that next generation of leaders in the healthcare sector? Yes, absolutely. I mold the next healthcare leaders by sharing real life ex experiences. Because as I stated, I've been in healthcare for 35 years. So someone that's actually been there, worked through it, seen the changes over the years, I share those experiences and I challenge the next healthcare leaders, what are you going to do to keep patients safe and free of infections? Because a fall or an infection those two things, a patient can expire or pass away. So that's Plus, what I challenge the healthcare leaders with, with solving those and providing care to the patients to keep them safe, free of infections, and then also in a cost-effective manner, because that's, that's another concern, because healthcare, as we all know, is expensive. I'm wondering about the millennials and the Gen Zs who want things a little bit different as they learn. You know, they're more into the video and the short. And how have you approached that at all with trying to get the younger generation, the next generations to see with all the people retiring over here, how they might be able to move up within the organization? Yes, I have definitely discussed this with the younger generation and utilizing technology 
For example, when I started 35 years ago, we didn't have an electronic health record. Everything was written. We had paper charts. We, we utilized what's called a trifold. And actually that is the backup <laughs> for if the electronic health record does fail, it goes back to paper. However, through the nursing programs, they're not you know, taught that because it's more of an electronic health record. But I share with the younger leaders that are coming to make sure they're well diverse because electronic health record and technology, I, I, I agree with it. You know, it costs lots of money. And whatever function that it can do, as I always say, let's do it and let's see, let's have this bad boy smoking, right? Uh, because we pay lots of money for it. So, but I still go back to, you know, what if, because of my training and all the different, the scenarios and real life experiences that I've been in, if it fails you, what do you do? So being able to think fast and think on your feet, I instill that in the younger generation because trust the patient and not the equipment, right? We want the equipment to do what it can do, but always check your patient first because if your patient is not feeling well, but your equipment is saying different, but the patient is looking a little dusky, you know, is holding their head. There, there's something wrong. I don't care what the equipment says. There's something going on with the patient. So check the patient. Mm. I'm really interested in hearing about your giving circle. So the African-American Women Giving Circle is really a significant community initiative that you co-founded. Can you tell me a little bit more about its mission and maybe the kind of impact that it, it wants to create in Dayton, Ohio? Yes, the African-American Women's Giving Circles was founded in 2008, and we have been in existence for 15 years now. And the mission of the Giving Circle is to help local 501c3s or not-for-profit organizations during a need that they may need. We meet quarterly and we discuss various organizations. Our target is more towards grassroots organizations because those are organizations that need that extra support to get started and to be able to get out in the community to deliver their mission, their vision and value to the community. So that is our target and our impact over the 15 years has been significant. We have been able to help thousands of organizations over the years and we are just alighted. Uh, initially when we started, there were th over 30 women in the organization and today there's 20 women, which again, we meet quarterly and we decide on which organization to give to and that's what we do. We uh, bless the organization and we try to hand deliver that money because it's important to meet with the CEO of the organization and to hand them the money. Because a lot of times they, you know, they don't know where they're, they're gonna get their next money from to help the organization to continue to move forward. So it's just a blessing to be able to walk through the door and to, hand deliver the checks to the organizations. Lastly, as an award-winning registered nurse, what advice would you offer to young professionals stepping into the healthcare industry, especially in these changing times? So I'm, I'm saying to, to help them figure out what the job is all about uh, whether this is a good field for them to go into, et cetera. My advice for the younger generation is what I share with them is to remember your why. Why did you come into healthcare? Why did you want to be a physician, a nurse, a radiologist, et cetera? Because your why is what's going to keep you. Again, I've been in healthcare for 35 years 
And it goes back to my initial helping others, giving to others. That is what has kept me in healthcare for 35 years. And through orientation, when I provide orientation to new employees, I ask them that, the why. Because some days are challenging. It's not just the patient, but you're part of a team. So working with the healthcare team, you have patients in front of you, you have their families, and you have several different family members coming at you. So how do you juggle all of this? And it goes back to your why, why you're doing this. So to remember that when days are challenging or when you want to give up, um, remember your why and what your gifts are inside of you. And that's what's going to keep you. That's very valuable advice, <clears throat> really is. Is there anything you'd like to leave our audience with? Yes, I would like to leave my audience with a couple of things. Uh, my website, my website is www.drsabrinashealthcareconsulting.com where I can be reached for coaching, for speaking, and then also consulting. And my email address is Sabrina at Dr. Sabrina's healthcareconsulting.com. And lastly, I have a live training that is coming up and it's going to be done via Zoom. And that is on Saturday, October 8th. And it can be found on eventbrite.com. And the title of it is The Mark Method Improve Personal Quality. So this is a webinar that will be focused on utilizing the MARP method to improve your personal quality, such as the example I provided earlier with losing weight or just working on a personal goal of yours, um, but utilizing the MARP method to improve that. So Sabrina, this may not be published until later than that. So the question is, do you do this on an ongoing basis? And where could they go to find out what the new schedule is that will be close to when this might be posted? Yes, I do do this on an ongoing schedule and it is quarterly. So four times a year that I provide it and the information can be located on my website, which I provided www.drsabrinashealthcareconsulting.com. Also on my LinkedIn page, uh, and that is Dr. Sabrina Dean or www, excuse me, Dr. Sabrina's Healthcare Consulting.com. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you so much for being with us. And you've done some marvelous things over the period of your life. And something where you're continuing to help people is so worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to have me as a guest on your podcast today. You're welcome.